From the home screen menu down below pressing the home button, you will see next to the home button is a menu button. The menu button will provide quick and easy access to things like adjusting the screen backlight. We'll select the back arrow. Different sources will have different screen brightness adjustments. You can press the menu button again to turn the display completely off. This is great if you're driving at nighttime and you don't want to have a lot of light flashing. You can just simply have a black screen, but you'll still have music source playback. Tap the screen to turn it back to on. Pressing the menu button again will bring up other functions. If you have a camera connected, this will simply force the rear camera on so that you can view the rear camera. By touching the top center section, it would toggle to a front camera if you had a front camera connected. And then touching the bottom section of the screen, bottom center area will cancel back to the main screen. Pressing the menu button again will give us access to the setup menu. The setup menu here is where you can go in and select specific functions. The AV output setup, if you had an additional audio video source, you could select from there. The display will allow you to select specific functions such as the key color, you can change the background, you can even change the viewing angle. So if your receiver is mounted at a specific angle, it will help the picture playback quality. We'll arrow back and go to the next menu, which is user interface. User interface will allow you to select specific functions like turning the beep function on and off. Here you can also adjust things like the clock. The clock can be sent to NavSync, which will simply use the GPS antenna to derive its information. Or you can change to manual mode if you'd like to manually set the clock and date. We'll go back and the next function will be the camera. That will take us into the camera settings. Here's where you can actually set up the specific functions for the rear and front cameras. If you had the optional Kenwood CMOS 3 series camera, which allows for touchscreen control to change different viewing angles, such as changing to split screen mode, you could select that as an option, or you could select other if you're using any universal rear camera. Rear camera interruption can be turned to on. This will then enable the rear camera to be displayed when the vehicle is shifted into reverse. Down below here, you'll see parking guidelines. You can turn parking guidelines on to help you guide you into that parking spot. The guideline setup will allow you to adjust the parking guidelines. You can select a specific icon and then move the arrow up or down. You can initialize to put it back to the defaults. We'll select the back arrow. And then the next item down below you'll see is listed as dashboard camera slash front camera. Here you can activate the front camera by selecting an other or again a CMOS 3 series for touchscreen control or the optional Kenwood DRV-N520 which will give you touchscreen control playback from the DRV-N520 all via the touchscreen on the DNX775 RVS. We'll select the down arrow to see if there's any other functions there and nothing else is highlighted at the moment. If we were to turn the front camera to, let's say, other, now we can then select functions such as mirror camera image. So if a specific reverse camera needed to be used in the front of a vehicle, even though it displayed a reversed image, the receiver can internally reverse the image so that it can be viewed properly as a front camera. Now when we select the back arrow, we'll go back to the setup screen. You'll see the special icon right there. That special icon will allow you to select specific functions like storing audio settings, viewing software information, or putting the receiver back to defaults by selecting initialize. Next, you'll see the Bluetooth setup menu. Here you can turn the Bluetooth to on or off and adjust some of its settings. We'll select the back arrow. And next will be the navigation. The navigation icon will allow you to control the nav voice volume. When the navigation is providing a voice prompt, if you would like it to play out of the front left speaker, or the front right speaker, or all of the front speakers, you can select those options as well as control the volume level of those options. You can also turn the nav mute to off. We'll turn it back to on. Now we'll press the home button to go back to the home screen. You'll also notice that this menu button, when pressing and holding this button, 
we'll force the camera on immediately. Now earlier, we activated the front camera source, so now you notice that front camera is displayed. You can simply touch the top center section, as mentioned previously, to toggle between the front camera and the rear camera. We'll select the bottom section to cancel back out. Next to the menu button is going to be the app control button. When you have a connected Android or iOS device for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or for Kenwood WebLink, this will switch between the App Source screen and the current screen that you were on previously. When a Bluetooth phone is connected to the receiver, you can press and hold this button to activate the voice command of the Bluetooth phone. Then you'll see the eject button. The eject button serves a few different purposes. It will allow you to actually adjust the physical angle of the screen. Then you can also select Disk Eject if you would like to eject a disk, or you can also select Open. The reason that you would select Open is because that brings you to the SD card input slot. This can be used for future Garmin updates, but it's also a source that you can access to be able to watch videos, listen to music, and so much more. We'll select the Eject button to close. You can also select different sources by touching these nine boxes in the lower left-hand corner. You'll be brought to a list of additional sources with an arrow. You can select the arrow button to access multiple different sources that may be available. If you'd like to have one of the specific sources always be on one of the three home screen options, you can simply move that source. For example, if you were going to use Bluetooth audio on a regular basis, simply press and hold the Bluetooth audio icon and drag it to one of those three slots. Now when I press the home button, you'll notice that the Bluetooth icon is right there. So as you can see, easy to access icon controls, easy to access functions within the receiver, and the built-in Garmin navigation system. Kenwood.